Hey everybody, welcome in. Garbage time sports. Joe Shad going solo here tonight. It was a college football Saturday. It is college football Saturday night. Let's get into it. I got my notes. Let's get it started. Off the top, I'm going to go Michigan and USC. I think this was the best game of the day. Michigan is back to looking like Michigan, and I credit that to the coaching staff for finally going with Alex Orgy at quarterback. It was easy to see from the start of the game that they had an identity, which is something that Michigan has lacked through the first three weeks of the season. It was easy to see that the players had confidence in their quarterback and they had confidence in the offense that it was going to get the job done eventually if they just kept to the system and kept working hard. I thought that was very apparent in that Texas game. I thought Michigan quit a little bit because as hard as that defense was playing to try to keep them in that game, deep down they knew that Warren, the quarterback at the time, was not going to get it done for the Michigan Wolverines. But today it felt like that defense was playing hard, saying, hey, Orgy He's going to take care of us as long as we take care of him and let's keep playing. I think that Texas game kind of skewed what we all thought, myself included, of what Michigan was going to be this year. But at the same time, if they would have kept Warren at quarterback all year long, Michigan would have won seven games this year, if that. But they switched the athletic run first quarterback and all of a sudden they have that 11 man run game that's very hard to stop in college football. They have beef up front. They still have toughness. They still have power. Today felt like Michigan football. As an Ohio State fan, you can see it behind me. I am 100% more scared of Michigan with Alex Orgy at quarterback than I was with Warren at quarterback. This is the type of team that beats Ohio State. This is the type of team that beats a lot of schools in the country just like they did last year. Great offensive line, great defensive front seven, and a run game that just absolutely pounds at you until you break. And eventually it did break today for the Michigan Wolverines. They had two huge runs, three huge runs. Two of those runs were touchdowns. One of them was just late in the fourth quarter, getting all the way down the field, getting them in range to be able to score a touchdown with about 35 seconds left in the game. That's what a good run game can do for you. You can wear guys down. You can start to see the defense crack a little bit. And Michigan was able to take advantage. They didn't have to throw the ball too much. They threw it a little bit. But whenever you have a QB that is special with his legs, he doesn't have to throw the ball extremely well. We're not talking in... We're not talking NFL quarterbacks here. We're talking college football quarterbacks. You don't need a guy that can really sling it if he has great legs because those legs open up everything else in an offense. Michigan finally figured that out. Apparently, now the backup Warren beat out Orgy in camp. Of course, the pocket passer beat out the runner in camp. Run first quarterbacks, scrambling quarterbacks don't look good in drills. They don't look good in seven on seven. They don't look good when you're standing in the pocket trying to hit a track can 30 yards away but when it's game time and it's game mode and you need someone to go pick you up a third and four that is when you want the scrambling QB whenever everything's covered and there's nowhere to go with the football he can pull it down and make a play whenever the offensive line is getting their butt kicked by Texas that's when you want the scrambling QB there's got to be there's got to be some smarts there by the coaches of course the pocket guy is going to look better in camp Alex Orgy should have been the starter from day one that was the plan after the national championship and that changed over the summer into fall camp for Michigan but Alex Orgy absolutely proved that he was the right guy for the job absolutely looked fantastic today. I thought he did great. I thought Michigan was back to being Michigan and USC looked a little bit like we what we thought USC might look like this year. A lot of jokes were thrown USC's way and the entire Pac-12's way as they were coming over to the Big Ten. It's, hey, are you going to be ready for Big Ten football? Are you going to be ready to get punched in the mouth over and over and over again? And in the first half, USC didn't look ready. Plain and simple. They got balfed in the second half. USC tightened up that chin strap a little bit, got to work, and they looked a heck of a lot better, both defensively, just toughening up, and offensively, being able to get their receivers in space a little bit more, getting a few touchdowns and turning this into a game. USC had all the momentum in this game until Miller Moss threw an interception which happened to go back to the house for six. That was a huge pick six that changed the momentum a little bit, that kept Michigan in the game because it looked like USC was going to get this done. A lot of people had USC in this game. I had USC in this game, not going to lie to you. I didn't bet it. I wasn't too confident in it because of the Alex Orgy going to quarterback, but everybody was wrong. Michigan came out. They were aggressor. They imposed their will. The big house was rocking. Everybody was ready to go. 
Now, what do we think of USC based on this loss? That That's the interesting question. Their defense is better than last year. There's no question that USC's defense is better than it was last year. But that's not the question for now. The question now is, is the defense good? Not just better, not just average finally, but is it actually good? They didn't give up a ton of points, gave up a couple huge runs. They got pounded over and over again. Not a lot of teams are going to pound the ball as hard as Michigan did against that USC defense. But USC started slow today. And what whatever you think of USC probably has to do with what you think of LSU. And we'll get to LSU in a second. That win carried a lot of weight with everybody, myself included, nationally, everybody. Oh my gosh, USC just beat LSU. What is LSU? We're still trying to find out. We'll talk about LSU in a second. I think USC still has a lot of wins on their schedule. Michigan was one of their tougher games. They have Penn State. They have Nebraska. But everything else, it's very winnable. And Nebraska looks winnable as well after Nebraska loses to Illinois on Friday night. So I still expect USC to be in this playoff conversation coming down the stretch. It's going to be a big game against Penn State here in a couple weeks to really see who that second, third, fourth team, how that's all going to lay out in the Big Ten. But not being able to knock off Michigan, who everybody thought was susceptible, is a huge, huge loss for USC. But their season is not over. That's only one loss. We're in the playoff area where it's 12 teams. Everything they want is still in front of them. They do have to go out and take care of business against Penn State now, though. I think their margin for error is gone. Unless LSU turns up like winning the SEC or something like that, I don't know if USC can afford another loss outside of a Big Ten championship game. I'm going to trust Lincoln Riley with the offense. A very slow start today for the offense, but that's a really good Michigan front seven. Not a great back end for Michigan. Second half, made some adjustments. They were able to exploit it, get into that secondary with their playmakers, and make some things happen for this USC offense. That part, I'm good with. I'm always going to trust that. The defense, this was a unique challenge. I still want more data on the defense before I make a judgment. They are definitely average. The question is, is USC's defense good? We will find out. This was a really fun game. Best game of the day, if you ask me. Really good time watching that game, even though I am an Ohio State fan, and I hate seeing Michigan win. Again, 100%. 100% more scared of Michigan today than I was a couple weeks ago, and it has to do with Alex Orgy. That tough physical run game, that's exactly what Ohio State struggles with. All right, guys, let's move on to college game day game, Tennessee against OU in Oklahoma. Guys, I tried to tell you on the last episode, the last college football episode, I tried to tell you this was my biggest bet of the year. This was my biggest bet of my life. Tennessee minus seven, lock it up. No problem. No questions asked. And that's how it felt. That's how it felt from the start. Even though Tennessee took a little while to get going, the offense never really got going against a very, very good Oklahoma defense. Oklahoma tried to make this interesting late. Ultimately, wasn't able to get a two-point conversion to cut it to eight and see what happens from there. Maybe an onside kick. Kind of a boring game to watch, really. But I thought Tennessee... But I thought Tennessee was absolutely in control from the kickoff. Shout out to Oklahoma. That defense is legit. Tennessee has looked like the most explosive offense in the country. Them and Ole Miss through the first three, four weeks of the season here. The running backs, Nico, Oklahoma held them all in check. 25 points, that's not a whole lot for how explosive a high pool offense really is. But OU's offense struggled mightily. And Tennessee has a really good defensive line. Tennessee has a very solid defense overall. But Oklahoma, they're missing some offensive linemen. They're missing some playmakers. The quarterback, you know, they go with a different quarterback halfway through the game. It's just in flux in Oklahoma. And everybody thought Oklahoma could be in for a rough year. They have a very tough schedule. This was one of those games that everybody circled. That's probably an L. And it turns out that it was an L. But the defense is legit. They're going to be able to stick around in a lot of games that they probably don't have any actual business being in because of that defense as long as they don't lose heart in the offense. I think the offense will get better. Guys will come back from injuries. It'll be a slow build. It's not going to be a great year for Oklahoma. Nine wins would be fantastic, praise the Lord type stuff from Oklahoma. But I expect them to have a winning record. I expect them to be just fine in the SEC. Not everybody's going to win the SEC. The SEC is very deep. Oklahoma not going to be the top four or five team in the SEC this year. But a tough out, a fun watch, especially if you love watching defense. Tennessee, on the other hand, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. I know Nico is only 
he, he's young. He's young in his starting quarterback career here. But the sky's the limit for the Tennessee Volunteers. I can't wait for them to go in and take on one of the top dogs, whether that be Alabama, Georgia, Texas. I'm not sure off the top of my head who's on their schedule. I should look that up. But whoever they have, I can't wait for them to play one of the top dogs in the SEC history. I think they can take it to them. I think Tennessee can hang with anybody in the country. Not saying I'd pick them over Georgia. Not saying I'd pick them over Texas. But I would. it would be a game. It would be a game that I would not want to bet on. So Tennessee goes into Oklahoma 25-15, to walks away with the W, and Tennessee is feeling fantastic 4-0 and heading in to SEC play. Let's talk Friday night. Let's talk Nebraska. Let's go to Nebraska and Illinois. This is a horrible, and I mean horrible, loss for Nebraska. They lose in overtime. We thought that Illinois would play ball control, play great defense. They did play very good defense. But they were able to sling it all over the yard as well. Four touchdowns for Altmeyer. Really good game for him. Nebraska had the chance to put this away. There's two plays in particular. One, they miss a field goal kind of late in the game. That could have been the difference maker to get the win in regulation. And then a jump ball type play in the end zone. Nebraska receiver and the Illinois corner going up. I said Illinois, didn't I? I'm going to keep it in. Don't worry about it. The Illinois corner. Going up for the ball, the corner's able to kind of rip it away on the ground from the Nebraska receiver. Ends up being an interception. If that goes the other way, Nebraska's off and running. No chance that Illinois comes back and beats them after that sort of play happens. But it turns out to be an interception, and Illinois hung tough the entire night. Just hung around, hung around, hung around, and was able to get the win. They kept the crowd out of it. I thought that was a huge factor. I'm watching on the TV. I didn't hear the crowd a whole lot. I thought there was something wrong with my sound. The announcers over-talking the background noise or something like that. The balance wasn't quite right. But no, going through Twitter, hearing more things about it, the crowd just wasn't that into it. The crowd was scared from the start, it kind of felt like. I think program-wise, Nebraska is still looking up and up. I think Nebraska is still going to be very good good this year. I think they still walk away with nine or ten wins. They have to go play Ohio State. That's probably a loss, but everything else on their schedule is very winnable, just like this Illinois game was winnable for Nebraska. On the Illinois side, they're 4-0. They're feeling fantastic. Sky's the limit right now. They got to walk into Penn State next week. That's going to be a huge game. Illinois, who knows, they could be ranked 19th, 18th, something like that after beating number 22 Nebraska in Nebraska. This could be number 9 versus number 17, something like that. This could be a really fun game, a really big game for both teams. This is going to be the first real test for Penn State. Penn State struggled with Bowling Green, struggled putting away West Virginia, who got the win today over Kansas, by the way. But this is going to be a real test for Penn State, just like it was for Nebraska. The defense for Illinois is going to be there. It's going to be legit. They're going to be balanced on offense. Bielema is a very good coach. You don't want to under Estimate him. This is a huge spot for Penn State now, and this is a huge spot for Illinois. Illinois, we're not thinking Big Ten title hopes yet for Illinois. They have Penn State, they have Michigan, they have Oregon. They have a tougher schedule than Nebraska did. That's why the hype train was up for Nebraska in this game. If they can get over this hump, all they have left is Ohio State. Are they 8-0, 9-0 and walking into Ohio State? No, Nebraska will not be. And now Illinois is 4-0 going into the heart of their schedule here. If they can beat Penn State, sky's the limit then. Penn State's better than Michigan. Penn State has looked better so far than Oregon. If Illinois can go beat Penn State, it's going to be a lot of fun the rest of the year to see where that team ends up. Shout out Tom Fernelli, biggest Illinois fan out there. The Illini are here. The Illini, huge win. Huge win on Friday night. Almost shocking. All right, guys, let's go over to Mizzou. They got taken to double OT with Vanderbilt. Should have been triple OT, but Vanderbilt missed a chip shot field goal in order to end that game. It should have gone into a third OT, which in college football, who knows what happens when you get into third, fourth, fifth OT, right? But bottom line is, I know Missouri has a very soft schedule, right? They play... They play Alabama, but then their other two toughest games left are is OU and Texas A&M. 
good teams, not world beaters, very manageable if you're the number seven team in the country. I just don't think Missouri's actually the number seven team in the country. I just don't. I don't see them as a real contender in the SEC. I don't see them as a real contender to make the playoffs. I think they're going to stumble somewhere. Maybe they lose two out of three of their big games. Maybe they lose three out of three of those big games. The defense is absolutely 100% legitimate. The defense is awesome. They are fun to watch. They fly around. They make plays. They do what they do. They are very, very good. But I watched all. I watched every snap last week against Boston College. I don't trust their offense. I don't trust their offense one bit. It's not explosive. Quarterback's not fantastic. Doesn't look like they have very many playmakers. The offensive line is average. And that defense will keep them in a lot of games. But late in the game, when they need to go bleed out a clock or need to go score, I'm not going to trust them to get the ball. I'm not going to trust them to get the job done against Oklahoma, Texas A&M, maybe even Arkansas at the end of the year. I like Mizzou. I hope I'm wrong. It'd be kind of fun to watch them go into the playoff and really announce that they're here and go win a game in the playoff, go knock off Alabama. I'll be rooting for them in that game for sure. I'll be rooting for Mizzou. I just don't see it. Sorry, all the Mizzou buddies I have. I, I don't see it. I don't see it this year. Missouri's coming. Missouri is absolutely coming, but they need more talent, more firepower on that offensive side of them. LSU and UCLA, I already touched on this a little bit when talking about USC. What you think about USC is now directly correlated to what you think about LSU. And guys, I don't think much about LSU. I really don't. They had trouble putting away UCLA, who's going to be the worst or the second worst team in the entire Big Ten this year. UCLA has a weak roster. UCLA has weak NIL. They don't have much talent. They're in coach flux after Chip Kelly leaves for Ohio State to become the offensive coordinator. UCLA is supposed to be bad this year, and they are bad this year. But that game's tied up at halftime, and it takes Nussmeyer quite a while to get going in the second half before LSU pulls away. 34-17, I think, was the final. Don't let that final score fool you. That was a very close game for a large portion of that game, a lot like Alabama and Southern Florida last weekend. Maybe they're still in that quote-unquote tough out type category whenever they play in Alabama or a Tennessee or whoever you want to throw in, but I don't trust LSU right now. I don't think they're very good this year. I don't think they're going to be in the playoff. I don't think they're towards the top of the SEC. I'm officially kind of writing them off after that performance against UCLA. Prove me wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Would love to be wrong, but I don't see it right now for Brian Kelly and the LSU type. Clemson and NC State. Did we write off Clemson too fast? I know how bad they looked against Georgia. I understand that. The offense is anemic. They need some help. They need Garrett Riley to get this thing going. They need Cade Klubnick to live up to the hype that he had coming out of high school because so far he has not. There are people out there that think that Klubnick just can't play. He just can't actually play. Scouting, evaluating, Trying to figure out quarterbacks is the hardest thing to do on all levels of football. And it's possible the scouts just whiffed on Klubnik. He's just, he's not going to be able to play. He's not going to be able to play at this level. He's not an NFL type guy. He's not everything you thought coming out of high school. But on the other hand, maybe he is. Maybe Clemson is going to have an offense because they blew out NC State today absolutely crushed them. And NC State, say what you want, they're not a good offense. They're not necessarily a good team, but that defense is always at least solid. They're a solid defense. This isn't beating Panera Bread State. This isn't beating Nichols, right? This isn't beating Buffalo. This is a legitimate defense that they were playing against today and they went out and they absolutely smoked them. I think this ended up being like 59 to 34 or something like that. It wasn't like Yes, Clemson dominated and controlled the game, and this one was 21-3, to right? Clemson put up some points against a very solid defense. So Clemson, look out. I think we got Clemson and Miami in the ACC final. I think that's what it's going to be. I'm not sure who else really has a chance there. I liked Virginia Tech going into the year. Virginia Tech, oh, they've lost to a Big Ten and an SEC school. No problem. Yeah, it's a problem because the two losses are to Vanderbilt and Rutgers. That's a big problem for Virginia Tech. I was wrong about that one. I thought Virginia Tech would be a very fun dark horse. They are not. Virginia Tech is bad this year. They're not going to get it done. Maybe they can get it done in conference play and really turn it around, and they end up in the ACC title. I don't see it. They've looked bad. I'm writing them off. I was wrong. I'll take the L there. Maybe Louisville. Maybe I shouldn't. 
I don't know. I, I'm still going Clemson, Miami. I guess I have to mention Louisville in this conversation. All right, one other kind of big game today. It was Utah going into Oklahoma State. The Cowboys and Indians game, right? I think we can say it. I had a very simple formula going into this game. If Cam Rising is going to play, give me Utah. If Cam Rising is out, give me Oklahoma State. Cam Rising was out, and Utah won the game. So I was wrong about that theory. Oklahoma State, they've been disappointing this year. Ollie Gordon, who was supposed to be the best running back in all of football, he might still be good, but they are just keying in so tightly, keying into everything that he's doing, making sure that he is not the guy that beats your defense. Seems to be the strategy for everybody. The offensive line, the best offensive line in college football going into this year. They haven't looked outstanding. They haven't been woad Raiders. They haven't been just absolutely bullying everybody in the Big 12 or in their schedule like everybody thought that they would. Mike Gundy's Mike Gundy. He still might turn this around. They still could end up in the Big 12 title game. They made a furious comeback in the fourth quarter trying to get back in this game, but Utah was just a little bit too far ahead. Utah's really good, even without Cam Rising. I don't love them without Cam Rising, but they're still going to be very good, very solid. At the time I turned this on to start recording, K-State was down 24-6 to to BYU. So anything can happen in the Big 12 this year, and it's the most fun conference in America. It's going to be so much fun to keep track of. It's going to be crazy who ends up in the playoff out of that conference. All right, guys, the last thing I wanted to do here is I wanted to run down all of the undefeated teams still left in the country. We are three, four games in, depending on if you had a buy or not so far. This is through week four of the NCAA season. These are the teams that you need to watch in each conference. These are the undefeated teams that are still there. In the American you have two undefeated teams, Army and Navy, and they're both 2-0 and in conference. Tulane is supposed to be the best team in that conference. Right now they're 2-2, two and two, but they play a real non-conference schedule. In the ACC, you got Louisville at 3-0. and You got Duke at 4-0. and Duke, who knows? Maybe they can make a run at the ACC. I really like their quarterback. I uh, can't remember his name. The transfer from Texas. Knew he wasn't going to get on the field with Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning, but he's been really solid for Duke so far. Duke, 4-0. Why not? Miami Hurricanes are 4-0. The Pitt Panthers are 4-0. They won the backyard brawl against West Virginia last week. Oh, while we're on the ACC, by the way, Florida State finally got a win. They get it done against Cal today, like 14-9. Again, really ugly, but happy for Florida State to actually get a win. The Big 12 still has a handful of teams that are undefeated. Utah at 4-0. UCF at 3-0. We got BYU... BYU at 3-0 and Kansas State at 3-0. I don't have the result of that game right now. One of those teams will be 4-0. One of those teams will have a loss. Iowa State still undefeated at 3-0. Number 20 in the country, Iowa State. Why can't they go on and win the Big 12? It's wide open this year. Cam Rising, Hurt, K-State probably going down. Who knows what happens? Big 12, just awesome conference. I love the Big 12. In the Big 10, you still have a slew of undefeated teams. You got Illinois at 4-0. You got Indiana at 4-0. Really fun story in college football. Indiana, going to be a tough out this year. Ohio State 3-0. Oregon 3-0. Penn State 3-0. Rutgers 3-0. Indiana, Illinois, Rutgers still undefeated at week four of the season. Anybody have that on their bingo card? I don't care who they've played. Those teams are not supposed to be undefeated a quarter of the way through the season. So much fun. In Conference USA, you've got the Liberty Flames. They play a very weak schedule. They could easily go 12-0 and and represent the group of five in the college football playoff. I think the playoff committee would love to keep them out because they don't play anybody. They're not actually that good. They're, somebody's going to have to have maybe three losses as a conference champion to not have like the American champ jump anything Liberty does this year. But Liberty at 3-0, and that's what we're doing. We're going through the undefeateds. The MAC conference does not have an undefeated team. The Mountain West has UNLV at 3-0. and They had a very impressive win over Kansas last week. Put up a lot of points. Really fun watch. UNLV 3-0. and Maybe they can be the group of five representative. Let's go to the Pac-2. Washington State took down Washington last week. Won again today. They are now 4-0 and in the regular season so far. Washington State showing up for the Pac-2. The SEC has a slew of undefeated teams. Missouri at 4-0, Tennessee at 4-0, Georgia at 3-0, Ole Miss at 4-0, Texas at 4-0, Alabama at 3-0. Just a big seven, 
six team tier right there, all still undefeated. They're going to beat each other up. It's going to be so much fun. This this college football season is about to go absolutely berserk, especially in the Big Ten and the SEC. In the Sun Belt, you got James Madison. By the way, James Madison put up 70 points today on North Carolina. On a Power 5 school, James Madison dropped 70. That game's final score was 70 to 50. Just an insane story. Cannot believe it. That just... James Madison, love watching them play football. And that is it. Those are your undefeated teams still there in college football. Those are your playoff contenders probably. Of course, there's a few names that were not mentioned in there that are obviously still contenders. But that's just something I want to keep track of. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this full recap. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends all that good stuff. Really appreciate your time. For all of us here at Garbage Time Sports, have a great night.